So the approach that we take is to create very narrow environments. So for example, a robot taking care of one particular person. And then you would study with that person what norms and rules in that apartment where the person lives, with those family members, with that doctor, how this social and physical community, in a sense, is regulated by norms, rules, expectations. Okay. So you study them empirically as a social behavioral scientist with the people who are involved, not just sort of as a distant observer. Okay. And that those are the sets of rules and norms that you implement first. Then the robot has to learn because, first of all, we are not always aware of all the rules and norms that we follow. Things change, they're updated. Uh, a new uh, prescription procedure was just implemented, so this has to change. The robot has to be retrained. The robot should also be able to respond to small feedback of either politeness or leave me alone right now. I, I don't yeah. need your help. Uh, I just want to take a nap. The robot needs to be able to understand that and adjust its rule to always be around the person. So now it says okay. be around the person except when there's a strong request not to. So you have these sets of basic norms and rules and then you have a number of updates as the robot learns to adjust even better to the particular environment. And we think that if you build robots for actual human benefits, then you need to narrow down the domain to be safe and really good at providing those benefits. Yeah. And maybe after a while you can expand. Maybe the robot at some point can learn to also accompany the person to the neighbor's apartment. Maybe go shopping with them. And the robot will need to know a lot of rules about maneuvering on the street, in the store, in interaction with a store clerk, and so on. We have to understand how the human mind deals with moral challenges. And as far as we know at this point, people are um, unbelievable learners of norms. Yeah. They may have hundreds and thousands of norms, not all of them all the time in their heads, but any given situation that you enter activates the right kinds of norms. And then you judge actions of others, your own possible actions in this network of norms. These norms are not fixed, they're, they're, they're flexible, changing. We have some evidence that one and the same action can be forbidden in one context, permitted in another context, and prescribed in a third context. Yeah. And once you think about it, it all makes sense. But in terms of a philosophical theory, that can't be captured in these abstract terms. So what we're thinking about is more doing a psychological analysis of how the human norm system works and how these norms influence decision making and judgment. And then see to what extent you want to build that into a robot, maybe very similarly, not identically, it's yeah. not going to be implemented in the same way. But a norm system can absolutely be built into a computational machine. And from that perspective, then the only question is which norms should the robot follow? Maybe not all the same norms that humans follow, but probably yeah. many of the norms we expect the robot to follow, and the few we expect the robot maybe to be even more virtuous, and in other cases, we expect less of the robot. Yeah, That's and the, the early work on robot ethics and, and sort of the possibilities of moral machines struggled with this question, well, do we build a Kantian robot, do we uh, yeah. build a deontological robot? And sooner or later, I think people realized, or at least many, not all of them, that this is the wrong way of thinking yeah. about it. You have to match the robot to the interactants, the community members with whom it will function. And they are not Kantians, deontological, or utilitarian yeah, theorists. Theorist.